I'll, I'll take down for a hundred. For two, Barney. Keep calm. Well, get me off the hook, Barney. Three hundred. Three fifty. Turn around. Twenty-five thousand. How'd you... How'd you know about it? Word gets around. Barney, what is all this? <laughs> How'd you make it so fast? I shot him. I was bringing him in, he tried to break. Did you have to kill him? It was an accident, the shot went wild. Take it easy, Barney, I'll, I'll write out the report. Who was he? Kirk Martin, bookmaker. I'll call the coroner, Barney. Yeah, Cooper, you do that. Don't let it throw you, kid. He was a crump. Court, maybe they got 30 days. Eddie, I know it's a story. I also know these guys. They clam. Once a cop pulls the trigger, it's one big secret society. Well, well, I'll try to find a weak spot somehow. I... Brewster Nolan will come in now. Go pull your personal package from the file. Story. What's done is done. I'm sure Perk Martin would agree with you. I'm asking you for extenuating circumstances, Mark. Last year, Nolan killed two hungry wetbacks in a market burglary. Three years ago, it was that tramp over on Sullivan Street. Look, what do you want us to do? Use butterfly nets? Nolan shot low. The bullet went wild and killed Martin. Write it that way. Nolan's a pistol expert. Okay, Mark. Okay, I know the rules. The story gets buried behind a girdle ad. Nolan's taught you well. The others will defend him, too, to me, but not to themselves. Cut it out. As long as I don't write it. Come in. Later, detective. Brewster, 
I'll have your report. Here, give me that. Full name? William Taylor. Age? 23. Ever been arrested before? No. Say you saw him take the water cooler out of the bus depot. He was loading it on a kid's wagon. Why'd you take the water cooler? I was thirsty. All right, give him a drink and lock him up. All right, let's go. Who are you carrying this for, Kippy? Tony again? Matt Chisler. Jukebox Dan? He's in the tank for a gang cutting. This could have been the night. I don't see him no more. Odell's dead. Just a minute. Your wife. Yeah. How about that boxer, Chico Moran? Find out, Fuzz. We will. Ethel, I'm busy, Ethel. Don't bother me. Snick knives are concealed weapons, kid. You want to put in another hitch in that nice state girl's school where burglars can't break in? You're a cop. You tell me. Oh, listen to me, Kippy. I've got a daughter about your age. Ah, blow it out. Heads. Heads. Tails. Again. This is too expensive. Let's book him. Now, what's the charge? Gambling. What else? Come on, chum. Nolan. Now. When are you going to stop thinking with your trigger finger, Nolan? He tried to break, Captain. I heard. Cop. Most of this happened before I came here. Not my problem. What happened tonight is, either you're going to start using judgment, Nolan, or you can climb back into uniform and grow a new set of brains out in the daisy fields. Sorry I put you on a spot, Captain. There's no spot. You were a police officer acting in the line of duty. Nobody gouges us for that as long as I'm in this office. We gave you a gun and the authority to use it. One is no good without the other. They don't know that out there. So they'll scream blue murder until the next time they need a man with a badge. Get out. I'm busy. How'd he take it? True blue and sore as a boil. I'm fed to the gills. Try and forget it for a while, Barney. Yeah. Look, you've been trying to teach me to laugh off what we ran into. Go live it up. Thanks a lot, Lon. I got a date with Patty. Have fun. Right. Come inside. 
that. Who told you to do this? Bernie, you're hurting me. Whose idea was this? I asked Dave. He needed someone. He said it might lead to me up there on the stage. What are you trying to do? Drive the customers away? Why, you haven't got enough legs around here, huh? Got to put her in a peep show. Bernie! You asked me to give her a job. Not like this. Well, you know me, Bernie. A, a dope. Get out. Go on, Patty. Get your clothes on. We're getting out of here. Go on. Who are they? Private detectives walking like men. Used to be around here a lot. Cops, huh? No, robbers. Hey, Brewster. Sergeant Brewster. My name is Mr. Michaels. I'm Mr. O'Neill. O&M Investigation Service. We're acting in the interest of a client. In connection with a bookmaker named Perk Martin. Now deceased. Who's your client? We're working for Packy Reed. I'll tell you, man. When Martin got killed tonight, he was carrying some of Packy Reed's property. What was it? Twenty-five grand. What? Twenty-five, 25 grand. grand. Reed has it wrong. Could be. Except Martin had the money on him just before he got chilled. Phoned Reed to tell him so. Martin had $312.75. I was there. Nolan was there first. <laughs> Must be a mistake after all, man. If there was 25 G's on him, you couldn't have missed it, could you, Sergeant? You heard the report. Sure. What's to get excited? Got to give them this? They're after a story. Cabot, we don't know what happened. Give me a day. You really love that guy, don't you? You were a kid on the streets when he got hold of you. Now neither one of you can let go. Go on, son. Tie yourself in knots. Take your day. What's it to me? What is it, Barney? What is it that makes you hate like that? How can I work for people? How can I keep friends when you slap them around? I love you, Patty. I wish that could make everything right. It will. Things are going to be different. You'll see in a minute. What? You'll see. Think I'm gonna be a cop forever, like those other boneheads? Boneheads like Mark? You sort of like him, I noticed. He's nice. Mark's still learning his trade. I'm finished, graduating. Come on, I got something to show you. How do you like this house? Barney, did you? Not yet. It's not mine yet, but maybe, if you like it. Come on. Agent said he'd leave the key. It's a model home. All furnished, ready to go. Queen kitchen, the whole thing. Everything's automatic. The electric garbage disposal, dishwasher. And up here we have an electric stove, three burners. A special cooker. Uh -huh. And there's a refrigerator and a deep freeze and even a rotisserie. Barney, it has everything. Sure, come on. I'll show you the rest of the place. Guest bath down there. And this is the master bedroom. Hey! That's the worst of bad luck, hat on bed. <laughs> Come on. Well, how do you like it, honey? Oh, Barney, it's, it's just a darling house. I love it. This would be living, huh? 
Look, honey, you make yourself comfortable. I want to check on something out back. Excuse me. yourself right at home. It's as tight as a drum. Nobody will talk. Eddie, I'm doing my best. Did it bother you, that rock stuff in there? The subject of their attention is one of the lowest of lice. Merely a peddler, a salesman, a businessman. This is only his 15th offense. Selling to school kids. Not nearly as bad as someone taking a bet on a horse. Getting old, Cabot. I got old in this room, writing a worm's eye view of the human race. Then you ought to know when to lay off. I'm just a police reporter, Mark. But here it is, one, two, three. Now, these cops are often tempted to break a lot of rules. They got too much gas on their stomach and too little money in their pockets. And who's to say there won't be a big day when it's all going to be different? But right now, they do the best they can. Maybe it's not so pure, but they don't kill and beat up just for kicks. And they don't hide behind the tin wall of a police badge. Only a very few do. Is that all? That completes my seminar on your friend and teacher, Barney Nolan.
A few words. Cost you nothing. Talk's cheap. Talk to Barney. No, you. We're detectives, just like your tough boyfriend. Unlock the door. You can't come in. Mark. What's this little act about? We're friends of her friend. Well, listen, friend. The next time you so much as talk to Miss Winters, I'll hammer that private badge into your navel. Just another misunderstanding. The time has come when we are no longer welcome. Please come in, Mark. I want to talk to you about Barney. I just left him. Come on, let's sit down. Mark, is Barney in some kind of trouble? I don't know. That's what I'm supposed to find out. Did you go home? I think he went to see someone. Oh, who? Someone named Packy Reed. Barney give you anything to keep for him? Like what? Oh, anything at all. No. He almost started a fight with those two characters out there. What did they want? Oh, they're sewer rats. Look, Barney killed a man tonight. It's a prisoner. It was an accident. That's what Barney said, and I believe him. But some people say the dead man was carrying a lot of money. The money hasn't turned up. And some people say that Barney's a murderer. I think so, do you? I told you to believe him, and I will until I learn differently. Patty, I, I've watched him change over the last few years. He's not the same man he was. He's like concrete. The older he gets, the harder he gets. How can we help him? I think he's lonely, Mark. More than anything else, he wants to be loved. To have someone care for him. Like tonight, he took me to see a house. A new little house. He was like a kid, Mark. A house? He's thinking of buying it? Maybe, but mainly he wants to have something of his own. Somebody like you. He wants me to marry him, Mark. Well, you're doing good, if you love him. I know he's rough, strong, and impulsive. But when I'm with him, I don't have to think anymore. All I have to do is feel. I sound like a confession magazine, don't I? But I guess I'm lonely, too. Who isn't? Oh, Mark, we've got to help him. We will, Patty. All we can. Good night, Patty. Night. Monty Marks, winner of his last 20 straight fights here. Mr. Reed, fight. no one's There's here. not too much time to go on this. Come in, Marty. Come in. Hiya, Packy. Sit down. Fight's on, sir. Honey. Monty Marks in white trunks from a stand-up stance, forcing the fights with left and right. But a good right hook counter punch there by Valdez. And there's the bell for the end of the ninth round. A word now from our sponsor. For the most reflect... Man, the man's late tonight. Good fight, though. Marks has got the edge. Look back, I'm a working man. Get to the point, will you? I want to get home and get some sleep. All right, Barney. It's like this. I hired a couple of private detectives, Fat Michaels and Laddie O'Neill. I wanted them to get back some property for me. Somebody robbed you? Well, you might say so, Barney. But those boys, they're the violent type. All they know good is hurting people. Now, this is a job for a real cop. File a complaint, get a city man assigned. Uh, let me tell you. This uh, property of mine, $25,000 cash, was supposed to be brought here by Perk Martin. A hey, rest in peace. Ready for the start of round 10 of a fight scheduled for 12 rounds. Manny Marks there on the white trunks has had slightly the best. Kurt Martin usually carried a five That's grand roll to handle his bets. Tonight he was fat at 25,000. Valdez lends wow. a tremendous right. Manny Marks' knees are wobbly. He's trying to hold on here. 25,000. A nice pot of loot. Someone figured Burke for an easy knockover. He was. I don't care about Kurt Martin. I don't even care who cooled him, but I do want my 25 grand back. 
think you can find it for me, Barney? Don't be cute. You know I shot Martin. Man, the complexion of this fight has really changed here in the 10th round. There is Manny March just trying to hang on. A tremendous right punch in there by Valdez, and down goes Manny March for one, two, three. He's trying to get up, but he slipped. I still ask. Do you want the job? I don't know where your money is. You want it bad, huh? All that dough? You're full of wind, Reed. Martin was carrying small change. You made a dumb murder, Barney. You got a rumble. Call the cops. All that city out there. And you know, Barney, a man wanted to hide out in all that city. He couldn't do it. You had your chance. Go on home, Barney. Get some sleep. Talked to Barney last night. I don't have to tell the paper, Mark. They already know. They're sitting on it. Who told him? Hecky Reed's putting it around. Barney's getting hot. His hair's on fire. Brewster, let me have your notes on that Perk Martin thing. You got a new case, huh? No, just checking a few angles for the captain on last night. He wants a full written report. By all means, let me help you. Speaking as one of the principals. All right, Foster, get it. Put your shovel and I'm going. Dumb flap. I'll take it. This beauty's all yours. Let me go, you tin god. All right, come on, sit down. Manager of the Save-A-Lot Market, 9th and Robbins. Got him in the stock row. What's his name? George Washington. I did like about two years in the reform school, George. You coming on or off duty? Off. All right, go home and beat your wife. Yeah. Ever been picked up before? No. Hungry, huh? Yeah. When'd your father die? A year ago. Say, how did you know? We know everything down here. Your mother's gonna be upset when she hears about this. I'm Barney Nolan. You? Jay Phelps. Jay for what? Just Jay. All right, just Jay. You got caught, you know why? Because you don't know how to rob a store. See that detective over there? He tried it when he was your age. Got caught, brought him here. You know what I told him? Sure. Be good, say your prayers, and you'll go to heaven. Look, one more crack like that, and I'll slap your kisser off, you believe me? All right. Now, you know what I told him? What, sir? I told him the next time he wants to rob a store to come here, talk to me. Cops know how it's done. I also told him if he got caught again, I'd personally see that he was locked up till he was old and gray. I'll make you the same bargain. Here. Take that. Pay for those things, bring them home. I'll take him, Barney. All right. You owe me two years in reform school. You know Andy Tucker from the DA's office. Yeah, sure. Hi, yeah. Barney. Hi. DA wants some more details on that Perk Martin business. I'll talk to you later, Andy. Right. I filed the facts. Well, you know how we lawyers are. Now, it says here in the report that you were in Crab Alley when Martin made his break. That's right. He took a shortcut. What's your trouble? Deaf and dumb, I guess. Hmm. I'll 
send a man later. Huh? Oh. How far did Martin get before you dropped him? Uh, a couple of paces. Go on, go on. You have anything to add under remarks, Barney? Barney? Huh? I say, do you have anything to add under remarks? Oh, no. No, that's it. Hi, Patty. Hi, Bart. Day off? Nope, I'm working. Got a few more questions for you. Seeing me is work. I uh, checked all of Barney's moves last night. But you said you said you believed in him. It was an accident. I'm still on city payroll, remember? Sorry. I met Barney at the scene of the murder. Shooting. We went to headquarters together. He left there at 8.15. What time did he get to the club lockout? About 8.20. I had just changed into costume. Five minutes. That fits, I drove it. Then you left the club? About 10 minutes later. Where'd you go first? Straight to the model home. Then? Here. He left a couple of minutes before you came. Yeah, to see Packy Reed. He was there in 15 minutes, the time it takes in traffic. He was there at 17 minutes after 10. How do you know all that? Well, Reed said he arrived at the end of the ninth round of a big fight on TV last night. I checked the time of the round with the network. You detective. A good one taught me. It's Reed's money that's missing. Barney would never have taken it there. Look, Patty. If there's no connection between the missing money and Barney, he'll be cleared. I'll go out and get drunk with him. But if, on the other hand, saying he took the money, somewhere between the station and here last night, he hid it away. But you've cleared him. You said yourself you drove everywhere he did. Patty, don't you follow me? If he had the money, he must have hidden it sometime while I was with you. If he had it. Patty, I'm not doing this job for kicks. Look, he was in the back room at the club, then the model home, then he came right here. He, he left me at the door. Patty, what about when you were at this model home? What do you mean? He showed me through the place. He, he wants to buy it and carry me through the front door with a ring on my finger. Or is that breaking another law? Take it easy, Patty, will you? I know you're upset, so am I. All I want to know is... All you want to know is everything. Everything personal about a girl. Patty, in that house, did he leave you alone at any time? No, I was with him all the time. I told you, he was like a kid running through the place. Okay. Till this thing is cleared up, don't rush into anything, will you? Is that a warning? Just a warning. So long, Patty. Keep this to yourself, huh? I'll give you more. Hundreds. Hundreds I'll give you. 
thousands. Thousands, oh. you hear me? Thousands. Uh, you dumb. Detective Bureau, please. Thank you. This is Miss Winters. Is Barney Nolan there? Barney went home sick. Sick? That's right, Miss Winters. Any message? No. No message. Dave's Club Blackout. Is Miss Hi, Barney. No, she phoned she wouldn't be in tonight. Thank you. Again. Do you know what's wrong with mirrors and bars? 
Men always make hard eyes at themselves. Do you know that there's a people in the jungle that believe a mirror steals your spirit away? Maybe it'd do me some good. My mother always said I had too much spirit. Double bourbon three times. Did you know you could get goggles without a doctor's prescription that way? Skip the lip. I'm not interested. I'm busy. Girl business or business business? You know, you want to be tough. But you don't know how. Let me show you how to be tough. There. Now take a puff. Shrug your shoulders. Narrow your eyes. Very good. Now you're tough. My name's Beth. Jack Roberts. Say, can you find us if we take a booth? I'll tie a string on you. Look, I'm comfortable here. Joe. Hi, Pat. What did I do wrong now? Next time you leave your keys in the car, I've got to let somebody steal it. Oh, thanks, Pat. See you. Come on, let's take a booth, baby. Oh, you should change your mind fast. That's me. Take me or leave me. Well. What do you know? Poor guy. He was deaf and mute. Played the accordion on the streets for pennies. He must have been lying here, hurt bad. Couldn't call for help. Yeah, I guess so. Wait here for the ambulance. Cooper, don't touch anything. What do you got? I got a murder. Thirty-five seconds, what kept you? I stopped for a round of golf. <laughs> Let me leave you with this one happy thought, Jack. Someday we'll all be dead. All dead, from the feet up, including cops. Why cops especially? Why? I don't know. I'm a cop. <laughs> Where's your uniform? Home in the basement, mothballs, detective man. Oh, cops should be home in the basement in mothballs. <laughs> Kill anybody? Sure. Anybody you want knocked off? Not me. 
I love everybody. Besides, I'm hungry. Oh, it's about time they ate. One more drink, and they'd be climbing the walls. Are you ready for the spaghetti now? No, I'm not ready for a spaghetti. Send your telegram. Somebody else? Hello? Barney, where, where, they told me at the precinct you were sick. No, I'm all right. Where you been all day? Trying to find you. Are you sure you're all right? Sure, sure. I'm so glad. Barney, last night those two men came back after you left. They what? They came back, grabbed me, tried to force their way into my apartment. They touched you? Lucky for me, Mark came just then. Mark? He was looking for you, Barney. Oh. All right, Patty, I'm all right. You forget about me. Go to bed, get some rest. I'll talk to you tomorrow. All right. Right, honey. Run on, boys, honey. Hacky Reed. Hi, Ma. Hi, Barney. I'm taking you in. You got a charge? 
Homicide, first degree. You murdered Perk Martin. So you've joined the club at the precinct, huh? The Hate Nolan Club. I'm doing my job. Can't you spot a simple frame? Martin was one of Packy Reed's boys. Packy's out to scout me. Packy's got it in for me. Uh-uh, Barney. All right. Martin made a break, so I shot him. He was loaded and I made a touch. It's the first time, Mark. First time in 16 years that I ever took. Look, kid, we're pals. We don't make trouble for each other. I drew a deaf mute's case tonight. They thought he died in an accident falling downstairs. What do they think now? I haven't filed my report yet. You murdered Martin deliberately for the wad he was carrying. I don't think you can prove that. The deaf mute proved it. A dead witness is no good in court. How did you know he was a witness? You shot Martin in the back. Then you went through his pockets. Then you fired two shots in the air. Before the deaf mute died, he wrote those facts on a pad, what he saw. Listen, the guy was deaf. He was a dummy. Maybe he was blind, too. Yeah, maybe he was part of Packy Reed's frame. That fits. I came down here to get your reasons from you first. I got him. Let's go see Gunnerson. You really mean it, kid? About taking me in. Come on, Barney. Mark, give me a day, will you? Just one day, give me a break. Uh-uh. All right. Let's go. All right, come on. Stand up. Up against the wall, hands high, feet apart. You know the routine. You said the dummy wrote all that in a piece of paper. Which pocket is it in? It's at the precinct. Like you always said, evidence should be filed away safe. You got one big hole in your case, son. The dough. It's stowed. Well stowed. You'll never guess. And you'll never find it. There's no time to lose, Patty. Stop dressing. All right, all right, Barney, but you scare me so. What's the matter? You heard me mention Packy Reed last night? Big wheel runs the rackets. Well, he's trying to frame me over an accidental shooting. So I'm going away till things simmer down. You're going with me. Why? It's too fast, Barney. I, I can't think this fast. You gotta trust me, Patty, please. Barney, stay here. Fight back. It's the only way. I don't understand, Patty. I'm being railroaded. Packy Reed and his gunners are out to get me. And all my buddies at the precinct are out to catch a goat for Packy Reed. So I'm in the middle. One or the other will nail me for sure. Barney, this is crazy. Clear your name. Why run away? For 16 years, I've been a cop, Patty. For 16 years, I've been living in dirt. And take it from me, some of it's bound to rub off on you. You get to hate people. Everyone you meet. I'm sick of them. The racket boys, the strong arms, the stoolies, the hooligans. I'm through with them all. Maybe this jam I'm in turn out for the best after all, Patty. You and I will go away. 
Get a fresh start somewhere. I got the money. I had some saved. Please, Patty, hurry, will you? Barney. The money. Did it belong to Pack, you read? Mark said... Mark? What's he got to do with this? Barney. Why was he hanging around here last night? What did he tell you about me? He's trying to help Help me? Ten minutes ago, he tried to take me in. What's been going on between you two? Barney, wait, wait. He's turned you against me, hasn't he? Tell me, what did he say? Tell me, <laughs> tell me! <laughs> In front of the liquor store, a 390 down. Sheriff's car, 76. At the Samson Grammar School. Juvenile Thought maybe you'd join the Navy. Got a murder for you, Captain. Fine. I got plenty of murders. All I'm interested in is murderers. Killer's name is Barney Nolan. Look, sonny boy, I've heard that Perk Martin story 18 times and so has every other man in the precinct. A known underworld boss nails an accusation on a cop. What are we supposed to do, turn handsprings and lock him up? Nolan killed Martin in the line of duty, period. Unless there's evidence to the contrary and there isn't. The guy that wrote that is dead. What he wrote is exactly how Barney Nolan killed Perk Martin. How'd you get that? Barney, I tried to bring him in. Alone? You still got lots to learn. No. I've been lucky. Nine years of precinct, Captain. This is the first time I've been pulled into the drain. Everybody in here. Everybody. Barney Nolan's gone sour. He deliberately shot Perk Martin. And when a witness showed up, a deaf mute, he put him out of the way. What about him? I want him to hear this. They call us servants of the people. Well, our bosses are entitled to know we've had a maniac wearing a city shield. When this story breaks, all of you are going to be the goats. Every police officer in the country will get dirty looks and dirty words. And the funny stories about policemen aren't going to be so funny. We gave Nolan the same edge we give each other. We believed him. If he gets away, he'll laugh at us. If we nail him, they'll hate us. Go out and rub your faces in the mud. Hunt him down before he kills again. You can phone in your story. I'll need a picture, Captain. Yeah. Run it on page one. All cars out of University Precinct. Call your station about a homicide suspect at large.
about a homicide suspect at large. This is Kowalski, University Precinct, car 10. The homicide suspect at large is Barney Nolan, detective lieutenant attached to University Precinct. He may be driving Precinct Detective Car 8. His description. 5 feet 11, 200 pounds, a male Caucasian, 36 years of age, wearing a brown suit, brown shoes, possibly tan top coat, brown hat. This man is armed and dangerous, probably psycho. Use caution. Captain Gunnerson, University Precinct. Cop? That's right. This is Nolan's house. I was just checking the cellar. No sign of him. Well, we're on a stakeout. There's a code five in this area. Better get back to your beat. We'll take over. All right. Blockade's on all main roads. If he gets out of the city, he'll have to use a fix. Yeah? Look, this guy was our man, and I want us to get him before central headquarters takes over. That was Giano. Stake out of Patty Winter's house. She's disappeared. I was counting on her for bait. Said Nolan was overboard for her. She's his whole life. Yeah, probably gone to meet him wherever he is. I don't think so, Captain. Bet you a week's salary. Yours or mine? Mine against yours. Be Manning. He's the only one's got a key. Relax, man. That's quite a deal. A detective in a patrolman's uniform. Gets me around. You're nervous, Barney. It's been kind of quiet here. Doesn't your friend know how to talk? I'm paid to hide you, not entertain you. I got an examination tonight. Night school at my age isn't easy. That's tough. Business administration's a very difficult subject. Okay, businessman. Go administrate me a sandwich and leave us alone to talk. The price of a sandwich is $10. You said $500 a day covers everything. It'll still cost you $10. So it'll cost me! Go get it! You are a very hot commodity, my friend. I told you I can pay the price. I'm sure, Barney. Money buys a lot, huh? How bad do you want Argentina? Bad enough to deal with you. 
ten grand. You're cracked. Ten grand. Plus expenses. All right. U.S. passport, charter plane to Cuba, airline tickets to Havana to Buenos Aires. Fifteen grand. The complete package. A deal. I said fifteen grand. Let's have it. You think I'm crazy enough to bring it here? I think you better get it. Fast. I'll need a car to get the money. That can be arranged. There'll be a car outside at six o'clock. Get the money and I'll have a man to hand over the tickets. Where? Well, there's wrestling tonight. Gate B at the arena. Look, I got a uniform. I still got a face. I'll come back here. Once in, once out, that's all. Couldn't we find an alley somewhere? Kirk Martin got killed in an alley, remember? Professor, how about this night school of yours? Possible. Union High School has many potentialities. For a meeting involving such high intrigue, may I suggest the men's locker room? Men's locker room, Union High School. That suit you? Best we can do, I guess. All right, then. Between 8 and 9 tonight. How I know your man? You won't. He'll know you. 8742. 8742. last night to see me. Wanted me to go away with him. Sudden, just like that. He was acting crazy. I wouldn't go. I, I went away to think. Mark, you told me he was in trouble, but I... I didn't know it was this bad. Mark, I... I came here to help you. Anyway, I can. I've been going over Barney's file. We've got stakeouts and all his known hangouts. Patty, if we find the money, we find Barney. Think now. The other night, when he picked you up at the club blackout, was he with you all the time until he took you home? All the time except maybe five minutes at the model home. Patty. Why didn't you tell me that yesterday when we were talking on the roof? I was all mixed up. I, I thought you were being too nosy. That's where the money is. The model home, it couldn't be any other place. Where is this model home? Out toward Burnwood, I think. I... Hilly Ground? Castle Heights. What was the house like? Nicely furnished. Modern. Was there a, a sign like, like who furnished it? I think it was from Kling. Jim, Mark Brewster. Kling Furniture Company. Call the night number. Find out the street address of a new house they decorated out in the Castle Heights subdivision. Barnes. Yes, sir. This one is Officer Barnes. 
Watch out for her until I get back. Oh, and she's a guest, not a suspect. Yeah, Jim. Thanks a lot. I'll be back for you. Seven four two. That's right. I'm from Manning. Where's the payoff? I'll check those first. Figured right. Okay, Nolan, you're gonna take us to the door. What? Hey. Castle Heights track model home. Address 466 South Camden Drive. I'm heading that way now. Brewster, Sergeant of Detectives. Clear. This is Captain Gunnison. Relay to all police cause university precinct in the vicinity of Castle Heights subdivision. Operation Tin God. Suspect now wearing patrolman's uniform. Driving 1953 Brown Ford two-door sedan. May be headed for 466 South Camden Drive. Dragnet the area, code 21. Use caution. Let's go, code three for a while. Attention, all units out of university. Homicide suspect at large. Address 466 South Camden Drive. Use caution. Captain Gunnison, University Precinct. <laughs> What's the model house got to do with it? Don't know yet, unless that's where he stashed the dough. 
The night at the gymnasium, Nolan tried to make a fix. Ended up by knocking off Reed's goon. He still has Reed's money. The house? How do you suppose Brewster found out about it? Girl, who else? There goes a week, salary. What? Oh, never mind. <laughs> Thank you.